Hi guys this is Hirosaki. This story is all about what if Naruto was the dark phoenix of Kanaha. Naruto has a big secret, he isn't the dead last he appears to be. But why would he show that before he is ready to deal with the stones the council loves placing in his way? The sand aim, having opened his eyes will do his best to make sure that Kanaha will retain the will of fire. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 27, Finals Start. Finally the day all of Kanaha had waited for was there. The finals of the Chunin exams would be held today. There were many famous clan names in the finals, though none was more famous than the finally revealed son of the fourth Hokage. Naruto Namikaze formerly known as Naruto Uzumaki, who had already started making a name for himself and many nobles and wealthy clients wanted to see him in action. Then there were his teammates Suzuki Uchiha, last member of the Uchiha clan in Kanaha, who promised to become one of the strongest Uchihas of all times and Sakura Harano. Sakura had grown from a normal civilian-born Kunoichi into an aspiring medic nin, some were already seeing the next tsunade in her. Rumors that had spread over the village said that the whole team was exceptionally strong now thanks to the training the Godame Hokage had put them through in the six months he had trained his team. Then there were the heirs of the most important clans of Kanaha. Hinata Hayaga, Shino Abarame, and Kiba Inuzuka, even if the last one wasn't the heir of his clan, he was the son of the clan head, then Shikamaru Nara, Ino Yamanaka, and Koji Akimichi. Those nine Kanaha nins would face the three children of the fourth Kaze cage from Suna. It promised to be a great spectacle. The tickets had been sold out before a week was gone. Security precautions were at an all-time high and the guests were asked to identify every single member of their protection details. Among the audience were lots of ninjas of Kanaha, there of course were the senseis of the three teams that had qualified. Kurane Yuahai Sensei of Team 8, Asuma Sarutobi, Sensei of Team 10 and finally Kakashi Heitake, Godame Hokage, and Sensei of Team 7. All three were proud to say that their three rookie teams had been the only ones to get into the finals, despite having been seen as the underdogs in the exams and some thinking that the genin weren't ready for such a challenge yet. They had proven beyond any doubt that they were the best of their generation. Right now the genins that were hoping to get promoted were standing in the arena, facing the spectators. Kakashi's coronation to Hokage had been done two days ago. They wanted to have that part done before the invasion took place. It would be too much of a hassle to deal with the aftermath and have to succession to worry about. So right now Kakashi Heitake ruled Kanaha as the Godame Hokage. From left to right there stood Team 7, the Suna team. Team 8 and then Team 10. All of them were looking up to see the ones that had come to see the finals. Some of them had changed their style of clothing. Naruto had finally donned his new outfit with his special red cloak that was modeled after his father's infamous white cloak. Under it he wore long black pants that were fixed at his ankles with black bandages. A long-sleeved black shirt sat under a blood-red vest. On the back of his cloak, in black, there was a still as Dizumaki swirl, though upon looking closer you could see that the symbol was made of the Kyubi. The white Namikaze twister was on his right shoulder. Suzuki had changed from his blue shirt and white shorts to a totally black outfit with short sleeves and shorts. Sakura had changed her outfit most. Thanks to the month with Shizun she had got a good idea how a powerful Kunoichi fought and how she tricked her opponents. Especially a medic nin. So Sakura now wore a red and black short battle kimono over a black fishnet shirt. She also wore black leggings and red kunoichi boots that went to her shins. Team 10 looked like they did before, as did Kiba and Shino, but Hinata too had changed her outfit. She didn't wear the baggy jacket anymore, but a tight black bodysuit under a lavender battle dress. She still wore black shinobi sandals. Kakashi stood up from his seat. He sat between the Kaze cage and the Sandame Hokage, and addressed the audience. Welcome everybody to this year's Chunin exam finals in Kanaha. 
he said. The twelve finalists that you see down in the arena have proven to be the best of this year's candidates in the first two tests. Now you will all see their skill in one-on-one -on -one fights. I want to introduce to you these promising genins. From left to right, we have Suzuki Uchiha, heir of the Uchiha clan of Kanaha, next is Sakura Harano, daughter of a civilian counselor of Kanaha. Next in line is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, son of the Yandame Hokage and heir of the Uzumaki clan of Uzushio. Next we have the three children of the Yandame Kaze cage, Kankuro, the oldest, then Tamari and last but not least Gara. Next in line is Kiba Inuzuka, son of the head of Kanaha's Inuzuka clan, followed by the Abarame clan heir Shino Abarame. Next is the heiress of the Hayaga clan Hinata Hayaga. Next to her you see Ino Yamanaka, heiress of the Yamanaka clan, then Koji Akimichi, heir of the Akimichi clan and on the far right, Shikamaru Nara, heir to the Nara clan of Kanaha. The order of the fights has been decided beforehand after the Genins passed the second test. The first fight will be between Sakura Harano and Kiba Inuzuka. Will the other participants please leave the arena? Kakashi asked and the spectators cheered that it would start soon now. Everybody but Kiba and Sakura left for the participants box and the two fighting this battle got into position. The proctor, Hei Gekko, asked if both were ready and got two determined nods. He started the fight after announcing that there were no rules in the fight besides that it ended when one participant forfeited, died, or if he stopped the fight because one participant had clearly won. Sakura went on a distance to Kiba, knowing from her sensei that the Inuzuka were Taijutsu specialists combined with jutsus that included their canine partners. As Kakashi sensei used ninja dogs himself she had a fairly good idea about how strong somebody working with a ninja dog could be. While Akamara was still small it wouldn't do her any good if she underestimated the pair. Kiba was thinking similarly. After all the training that all three rookie teams had done and the competitions against each other he knew that no member of Team 7 should be underestimated. They had all gone through rigorous training and while Sakura had been weak at the academy that was long in the past. He didn't know who had trained her over the last month but he would be careful and heed his sensei's advice to not be too brash as it could cost him deeply. He was just glad that he didn't have to fight Naruto though. That would have meant a certain defeat. He had no jutsu or trick in his arsenal that could help him against the blonde and he really didn't envy Shino who had to fight first against Naruto. Sakura made the first move and threw a batch of kunao at Kiba who dodged or reflected them with his own kunao. Sakura started running around him while simultaneously making clones of herself. Too bad that with his nose he would be able to perfectly tell where she was. He wondered though why she was blowing up so much dirt. Then he stopped and grabbed his nose in pain. What had she done? He had to defend himself when Sakura attacked with a quick kick aimed at his head. He avoided the kick and then had to deflect senbons that she shot at him from a launcher at her arm. Nice trick, but not good enough. You won't get us like that. Let's up this Akamaru. Kiba said and looked at his dog only to see him fast asleep, two of the senbons that Kiba had dodged stuck in his leg and back. No, Akamaru. So, now we have a real one-on-one. -on -one. I know that Inuzuka Teijutsu is dangerous to face, but if I take out your dog it is a lot less dangerous. Sakura grinned. Be happy that you are a comrade, otherwise that wouldn't have been a sleeping drug, but poison. I'll show you. Kiba roared, having lost his cool over the loss of his partner. This was not how he had planned his fight to go. He charged at Sakura, but for some reason he didn't manage to hit her at all. She always just shifted out of the way of his punches, kicks, and slashes. It was infuriating. And then her damned grin. Suddenly he stumbled and left an opening which Sakura ruthlessly used to land an uppercut against his chin. He flew back and stopped a little distance away. Then he felt his vision getting dizzy. What did you do? He asked now really having trouble staying awake. Your senbon didn't hit me at all. 
No, but you inhaled a drug that I set free while we were exchanging blows. You should only have at most 10 seconds until you join Akamaru in Dreamland. Sakura said. I not only spread a powdered plant that caused you pain when you channeled chakra into your nose and ears when I ran around you, I also made sure to let you inhale fumes from the bottle on my belt which are scentless, especially after you couldn't use your nose properly. Good night Kiba. Kiba fell to the ground, asleep. Proctor, Kiba won't wake up until two hours are over or he gets the antidote to the drug I used. Sakura announced and closed the lid of her bottle again. This had worked out perfectly. Her strategy had taken out Kiba without her getting injured or costing her too much chakra. After all, she had to fight more rounds after this and a good strategy was the main element you needed to show to hope getting your promotion. Winner is Sakura Harano. Hate announced and the audience cheered. While the fight had been short, it had been entertaining how the girl had tricked one of the clan ninjas. Will Ino Yamanaka and Hinata Hayaga come down here? While Sakura walked up to the competitor's box Ino and Hinata left it. Once Sakura arrived there she got compliments from her teammates. Good fight, Sakura, really clever strategy. Naruto praised. Yes, well done. Suzuki added. Thank you. I was surprised that it worked out this perfectly. I had feared he would be more careful after I took out his sense of smell, but it was really easy to send Akamaru sleeping. Sakura replied. He didn't expect you to improve that much over the month. You definitely learned a lot under Shizun. Naruto commented. They then looked down to see the next fight. Ino and Hinata had made their way down and were now taking their positions. Who do you think will win? Sakura asked. Hard to say. A few months ago I would have said Ino because Hinata had no confidence in herself. But since we started the cross team challenges she broke out of her shell and her taijutsu is really nasty to deal with. Suzuki commented. In the pure skills department Hinata might have a few advantages. The Hayaga clan is known to produce good fighters but she needs to get close for that to work. The Yamanaka clan has its mind jutsus and Ino took up studying poisons which allows her to keep her distance. I think Kurane sensei also got some genjutsu into Hinata's repertoire. It will be interesting in any case. Naruto added. Ino looked at Hinata. Had this been when they had graduated she knew she would have won against the timid girl. But now, after seven months the result wasn't sure. Hinata had gained massive confidence through training with her team. And if she got too close to let Hinata hit her with her taijutsu that was it for her. The gentle fist was a devastating style. She needed to fight from the distance if she wanted to have a chance at winning this. So she decided to start off with some shuriken that were laced with sleeping drugs. After Sakura's fight it was a bit boring but it was what she had in that area. Most of her techniques with poisons were still in development as building up the necessary resistances took time. Next to that she had her clan techniques. But most of them were more suited for interrogation and spying than fighting a one-on-one -on -one battle. She was just glad that Asuma Sensei had shown her two jutsus that she could use. She was a fire element and while she hadn't done elemental manipulation training yet, she had learned two basic fire jutsus that didn't rely on proper elemental manipulation. Both were derank but they were useful. She really regretted her stupidity at the academy now. Had she trained more like her dad had told her over and over again she would have bigger chakra reserves now. Not to mention her dieting. It had cost her. She knew that Hinata was the only girl of her class that hadn't dieted because she was simply too shy to pursue her love interest Naruto. Ino threw her shuriken and watched how Hinata elegantly evaded them by shifting her body out of the way. That was another point which made fighting Hinata difficult. She was incredibly flexible and devilishly hard to hit. Ino went through hand seals. Fire style, fire bullet. She called out and shot a middle-sized fireball from her mouth. 
It was in no way as impressive as the ones she had seen Suzuki use at the academy but they didn't need to be that impressive. Hinata jumped to the side dodging the attack before racing towards her. Ino started a barrage of shuriken and kunao, which Hinata either dodged or deflected with a kunao in her right hand. Ino retreated, knowing that if she got involved in a close-up teijutsu exchange Hinata could land vital hits. But this time she had used other shuriken. They had nearly invisible wire tied to them. Wire that would allow her next trick. Fire style, flying sparks. She called out and shot a barrage of sparks from her mouth. The wire was drenched in burn paste and therefore allowed Eno to trap Hinata in a net of fire. Well, at least that had been the plan. Water gentle fist style, protection of the 64 hands sphere. Hinata called out. Hinata seemed to create a dome of water chakra around her by sending water saturated chakra beams around her. The burning wires that Ino had set up hissed and then went out with steam coming from them. Hayashi Hayaga was looking at his oldest daughter with pride for a chance. She had worked tirelessly with the children of the clan on this jutsu. First she had simply used her normal chakra for the protection. It had been an impressive feat already. Based on Kaiten she had used the principle of surrounding herself with an impenetrable sphere. Her chakra beams as she called it had been formed to be sharp and thin. A true precision technique that could be both attack and defense. She had finished that part around halfway through the training month. Then she had worked on integrating her water-natured chakra into it and now he saw the result. The Yamanaka girl was trying to be smart in this fight but he was sure that Hinata would win. Ino was shocked about Hinata's unique jutsu. She had never before seen anything like that. Then suddenly she felt herself be hit. How? Hinata was still defending against her fire. You're within my field of divination. She heard from close to her. No, how did you get this close? Ino exclaimed trying to get away. Eight trigrams, thirty-two hands. Hinata said and then the hits started raining on Ino. Two hands, four hands, eight hands, sixteen hands, thirty-two hands. Eno felt lots of her chakra points being shut down. She fell to the ground, knowing that she had lost. How did you get close? She asked. I used the steam the extinguishing of your fire net produced to prepare a genjutsu which let you believe that I was still defending while I closed the distance to land my final attack. Hinata answered. Winner of the second match, Hinata Hayaga. Hey, declared. Hinata was shocked but very happy when she looked up into the stands and saw her father nod at her appreciatively. Chapter 28, Fights 3 and 4. Kakashi sat in his box watching the first two fights attentively. Next to him were the again retired Sandame Hokage Hiruz and Sarutobi and the Kaze Cage of Suna. Of course there were also two bodyguards for each cage. The participants were the best of the new generation from Kanaha. There were of course still deficits that needed to be worked out, but considering that all three teams that had passed the second exam from Kanaha were the three rookie teams it spoke a clear language. Kanaha's upcoming youth was stronger than all previous years. Sakura had performed great against Kiba. She had come a really long way since he had taken her on his team. The former fangirl could now truly be called a proud kunoichi from Kanaha. The training she had done with Shizun had brought her a major step forward. Kiba was strong, but he needed to plan his battles better and not let himself or Akamaru open for sneak attacks. He wouldn't get promoted this time, but there was a lot of potential for the future. Kurane could train her team more till the next exams and then the promotion was a serious possibility if his improvement kept on. Sakura was a definite Chunin candidate. She had planned properly, not let her opponent use his strengths against her and taken out his partner early on. She hadn't dragged the fight out for a long time, but countered her opponent's strengths in smart ways before landing the decisive blow. 
If tasked to lead a team she would find ways to keep them out of danger until they could succeed with little to no loss. In the second fight it showed that the academy needed to give fangirls a harder time and ensure that they at least needed to build up physical strength. Ino had come around from what Asuma had told him, but contrary to learning jutsus if you have enough chakra, you didn't get over years of neglecting physical working out, not to mention dieting, in a few months. Ino was the one that had had most problems with the resistance seals and had progressed slower than her teammates. Kakashi had seen the same with Sakura, but his merciless attitude and training regime had got her farther than Ino had come. Not to mention that Naruto and Suzuki were training nuts and Sakura had to push herself more to not fall too far behind them. Shikamaru and Koji weren't as ambitious and therefore they progressed slower. Not to mention that Ino had the problem that Hinata's Teijutsu style was hard to go up against. There was a good reason that the Hayaga clan was feared. Ino's strategy had been a sound one and it might have worked if not for Hinata's jutsu and trickery. And seeing how Hinata had managed to combine water manipulation with a new gentle fist technique was inspiring. Hinata had used her advantages well and acted when she saw an opening. He didn't know that Kurane had taught her to combine Genjutsu with Gentle Fist, but it was a great technique. He could only hope that the Hayaga clan would see it similarly. Hinata deserved to be praised for that fight. Your Genin seemed to be really good this year, Hokage-sama. The Kaze Cage complimented. I wouldn't have expected to find this many strong Kunoichi in particular. Thanks, what can I say? This year's candidates are very good. I'm of course especially proud of my own student Sakura. Kakashi replied with a nice smile. I'm looking forward to seeing what the other two can do. If you saw fit to reveal Naruto Namikaze's heritage you have to be convinced that nobody could kill the boy easily. And the reputation of the Uchiha clan will be tested for the first time in years again. The Kaze Cage mentioned. That's true but I'm sure that Naruto and Suzuki are up to the challenges before them. I hope that your son Kankuro is well prepared. Suzuki really wants to get to the finals to fight against Naruto. Kakashi revealed. He would have to beat Gara too first and that is a very difficult task. Gara is the best genin we have in Suna. The Kaze Cage boasted. We'll have to wait and see then. Kakashi stated. What do you think about the promotion prospects of the first four? The Inuzuka boy and the Yamanaka girl aren't ready. While the girl had some good techniques and ideas she lacks stamina to get her safely out of a mission that got difficult. The Inuzuka boy needs to get more control over his temper before he can be trusted with leading a team. The Harano girl and the Hayaga girl meanwhile are ready, I think. Both showed a good level of skills, some of them unique even in case of the Hayaga girl I think. And they planned properly to win their fights with little injuries on their parts. Of course their next fights will also be interesting to see as the opponents in their first fights were the ones they could prepare for best. The following ones will show how well they really prepared and how they react to surprises. The Kaze Cage answered. That about mirrors my thoughts. Kakashi said and then they stopped talking as the third fight was about to start. Kankuro knew that he was at a disadvantage. He couldn't really reveal too much about his abilities before the invasion started, but he had been ordered to weaken the Uchiha. So forfeiting wasn't an option. He was only glad that he didn't get the Namikaze boy as his first opponent. That one was strong, there was no question. After the information had been officially confirmed and revealed new orders had come in. Gara was to take him out as soon as possible. And if Tamari won her fight she had the same orders that Kankuro had, weaken her opponent. It wasn't a good situation. He knew that he was stronger when he could act from the shadows with his puppets, but he could hold his own in a fight. The one problem was that his opponent was an Uchiha and had the Sherry Nan. He couldn't fully concentrate on his puppets. Suzuki Uchiha would know soon how he used his puppets and try to find ways to stop him. 
and sadly he had no information to go by about the true strength of the other boy. Well, his best bet was poisoning him early on to make him weaker and slower. The proctor gave the signal to start and Kankuro let Crow fire a poison gas bomb. To his surprise not only did his opponent avoid the cloud completely, but was quickly onto him. There was one disadvantage that all puppeteers had to get around, which was that they weren't exactly strong in taijutsu and had little ninjutsu in their repertoire as they needed their fingers to control their puppets. And right now he wasn't good enough to control more than one puppet efficiently. He was working on two at the same time, but he hadn't perfected that yet. Against an opponent that was this fast he was in big trouble. Suzuki didn't need his sherry non at the moment. He knew about the basic abilities of puppeteers thanks to his training over the last month. Yamato had put him through the grinder and had not only taught him some very useful techniques to improve his arsenal, he had also drilled him on strategy and efficiency. Puppeteers were dangerous if they had a high number of puppets out and could keep in the background. And you had to look out for poison as they made their disadvantage in Taijutsu up by weakening their opponents and most of the times killing with one hit. But if you had an open field a fast opponent was far superior to them. And one thing Suzuki had learned over the month was combining the speed he had trained months to gain under Kakashi Sensei with Jutsus. He hadn't learned to do it with high level ones, but low and middle level ones were absolutely possible. So when the poison gas bomb flew towards him he was already moving. Fire release, Phoenix Flower Jutsu. Suzuki exclaimed and shot one middle-sized fireball after the other at Kankuro and his puppet. They rained down at his opponent from all sides and he was hard-pressed to defend against them. Suzuki kept his barrage up for 20 seconds before getting some distance between him and his opponent. He hadn't thought that it would be this easy to win, so he was on guard. What he saw made him look again. There was a heap of ashes and Kankuro next to it on the ground. Weren't puppets made with fire resistance seals? Naruto had put those on all of their clothes just for training. After all, it was a major disadvantage if you caught on fire. And the fireballs weren't that strong. If the puppet had been burned a bit and would be blacked now he could understand it, but this reeked of a trap. He activated his sherry non to see if Kankuro had used a substitution and was hiding somewhere. His suspicion was proven right when he couldn't see Chakra in Kankuro's body. So Suzuki was on guard when Kankuro tried to pull him under the ground. Suzuki knew that trick from Kakashi Sensei so he jumped up into the air and directly fired another fireball at the point where Kankuro was in the ground. He couldn't break the ground to force his opponent out, but he could make it massively uncomfortable for him to stay down there. Soon enough Kankuro jumped out from the ground and Suzuki went after him. Kankuro had put his puppet away to manage to underground hiding jutsu and was now open to attack. Suzuki landed some devastating combos on the black clad boy and finally kicked him into a tree in the arena. Kankuro fell to the ground, breathing hard, and blood coming from his mouth. Hate appeared next to him and checked him. Kankuro is unable to continue. Winner is Suzuki Uchiha. He announced to the cheers of the audience. Kakashi was very pleased how easily Suzuki had taken out Kankuro. From what he had seen Kankuro had at least suffered a few broken ribs and that would make him incapable of participating in the upcoming invasion. Not to mention that as the son of the Kaze cage he would make a valuable hostage after it. He would have the medics sedate him, supposedly to make the healing process easier. Right now, they were carrying him out of the arena while Suzuki gave a short wave to the spectators while walking back to the competitor's box. An impressive fight, Kakashi. Sarutobi said. Yes, your student showed great skill. Kankuro will have to become a lot better until he can fight on that level. The Kaze Cage said frowning. Ah, thank you. I'm proud of him. He showed good strategy and power. It's promising for a possible promotion. Kakashi told them. Indeed. Sarutobi agreed. 
your students seem to overall dominate their fights. Well, I trained them really hard since I took the team. They all learned a lot. Kakashi said proudly. Naruto and Sakura congratulated Suzuki to his performance. You really showed them how it's done. Sakura said. Yes, good work. Naruto complimented. Thanks, but he wasn't that strong. I hope my next opponent is stronger. I really want to get a good idea where I stand. Suzuki told them. The other two nodded, knowing that it was true. With just one puppet Kankuro wasn't as dangerous as a puppeteer could truly be. Koji stood opposite of Gara, not really sure how to go about this fight. He had no idea of what Gara was capable of, but he was determined to do his best. Ino had already lost her fight to Hinata and Team 7's members had both won their matches. He wanted to at least not shame his team and sensei. His opponent looked bored at having to fight him. The proctor gave the signal to start and Koji found himself directly activating his family's jutsu. The only information that he had been able to get about Gara was that he was dangerous and had no qualms with killing his opponents. Kiba had warned him about that as teammate had seen how Gara had coldly dispatched of a team for aim. So not getting caught in his techniques was vital. Koji expanded his body and went into his human meat tank to get a hit on Gara before he could act. To his surprise he found himself stopped by some kind of wall. He tried again twice from other directions, but every time he was stopped. He knew he had to change plans, so he rolled away and then returned to his normal form. Gara simply stood in his former position, not really doing much. You don't satisfy mother. Gara said darkly. Koji had no idea what this was about. Was Gara mad? What had his mother to do with anything? Around Gara there were tendrils of sand hovering. So probably some sand jutsu had stopped his attack. Well, sand wasn't a normal jutsu base. Probably he had needed a lot of chakra into it to let it react like it did. It was too bad that he didn't have any jutsus that drained chakra from a place. So what could be done against sand in general? Before he could think things through he had to dodge an attack from Gara's sand. He ran away, now happy that his team had got the resistance seals after a month of training as otherwise he knew he wouldn't have been able to avoid getting caught in the sand. The main question now was how could he hit Gara? His strongest Teijutsu move had been blocked and he needed time to get it ready. Time he suspected he wouldn't have against this opponent. He knew a few ninjutsus, his element was lightning, but they were still too weak to have a real chance against Gara. it seemed. Still, he wanted to do his best, so he would see where he got. He made two clones on the run and hoped that Gara would at least fall for them a moment so that he could ready his jutsu. He better tried his better one first. It would cost a lot of chakra, but he knew that with this opponent he wouldn't have a chance otherwise. Hiding among clones won't save you. I'll quickly dispatch you. Gara said. Koji meanwhile was farthest away from Gara compared to his clones and managed to get the hand signs done. Lightning release, lightning arrow. Koji exclaimed and fired an arrow of lightning at Gara. He hoped it would hit, but there was a good chance as Gara hadn't moved from his position at all during their fight. A wall of sand quickly intercepted the arrow and there was no damage done to Gara at all. Koji cursed under his breath. He had expected a bit more effect. From the information he had got from Asuma Sensei Earth Jutsus were inferior to Lightning Jutsus. But obviously Sand was either different or Gara's Jutsus were at a much higher level than Koji's. Well, Sand also turned to glass if it was heated massively or turned to mud if you drenched it in water. The problem was that Koji had neither in his arsenal. There was no way that a weapons barrage would get through that Sand either and he only had two explosive tags on him. He wrapped one around a kunao handle and then tried to mix it unnoticed under a barrage of his weapons. Sadly Gara still didn't need to move as his sand intercepted everything Koji threw at him. The bomb hit and exploded, 
but in the end there was no damage to Gara. Koji raised his hand. I forfeit. I can clearly not get through the defense he has. Trying that at my current level would be stupid. Koji declared. Winner by forfeit, Gara Sabaku. Hate announced. There was little applause from the ranks. While Koji had shown a few good techniques, there had been no real action. Kakashi knew that Koji had made the right decision. Gara was far above his level and Koji lacked a good way to get through that defense. He also didn't have help in the fight that could make up for Koji's problems or distract Gara for Koji to get a god hit in. That sand defense was really something else. I was sure this fight would go like this. The Kaze Cage said smugly. Gara is simply the best genin we have. Well, his defense with the sand was very impressive, but he didn't show a lot to work with to decide if he deserves to become a chenin. Kakashi stated. Oh, don't worry about that, he will do that later. No insult to one of your village's clans, but the boy wasn't advanced enough to go up against Gara. And the Akimichis mostly excel at Teijutsu if I remember correctly. A pure Teijutsu fighter or one with a few Jutsus to support him has no chance. The Kaze Cage declared. From what they had seen that statement certainly rang true. But Koji deserved some positive comments in his file for judging a situation properly and retreating as long as he still could. He also seemed to have learned a bit of strategizing, perhaps from hanging out with Shikamaru a lot. With a bit more time Koji would make a good chunin. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfictions. Looking forward to having you on board again.